Hello, it's Andrine, a Jewish American priestess. I'm coming to you on the cusp of the new moon, which is going into the month of Sivan in Hebrew. And that month is the month where we receive the revelation at Sinai, as we've been wondering for these last 40 odd days. Uh, we are on the, as I'm recording this, the 43rd day of the Omer. And so it's been that long since Passover. We've been wandering through uh, from our liberation at Passover. And now we're heading into uh, the mountain where we receive the revelation of Torah. We're going to do a reading today. I'm going to pull out some oracle cards and some Nordic runes. And maybe we'll do some clarifiers with uh, tarot cards today. So let's start out with pulling out three oracle cards that will guide us into our reading and we'll do some Hebrews, of course in the reading itself and then we'll, uh, we'll move on from there. I'll put the timestamps down below so we'll know where to find your reading if you're looking for it there. And there are our three cards. All right, let's start by looking at these. The first card coming up is Expertise. And of course we'll go into each of these as we go into our reading expertise. The second card to choose from is integrity. And the third card to choose from today is refine. Okay, let's pull out some Hebrews, I mean, sorry, some Nordic runes to go with each of these. So for the card expertise, We've got the Algis rune. Algis, which is about protection. For the integrity card, we have the Ansu's rune. Ansu's, which is about communication. And for the refined card, we have Degas, which is about breakthrough and light coming through. So take a moment to discern which of these cards and which of these Nordic runes uh, is appealing to you. Again, we have refine, integrity, and expertise. I will put the timestamps down below, and I will see you in your reading. Alright, for card number one, those of you who chose the Expertise card, let's take a look at it and just read what it says. An expert may be required to proceed further. Acknowledge what you've learned. Share what you know. Visit your own inner, inner repository before you seek new studies. Expertise. So there's some kind of uh, information that you have been seeking or learning about and are ready to provide perhaps to the world, but it may be that you need further expertise or that you need to listen to your own inner self or all of the above. That's, that's definitely up today. Expertise as you move into this time of revelation. And we have the Nordic rune of Algis, and as I said, Algis is about protection. It's said to be an elk or a moose, I guess, in uh, it's the same animal as we consider a moose. It's got these antlers. Um, some say it's also the elk sedge, which is a, um, it's a kind of um, gr reed grass that is very sharp on the edges. So it has this protective quality. It's about being um, shielded and having defense and uh, maybe even inner protection and defense. It, it's connected with protection from the divine itself. So there's a big elk in the sky that is here to protect you with its sharp antlers. And uh, that's something to, to be aware of and rest in right now as we are maybe seeking expertise from some others in the world as well as our own expertise or the expertise of our inner knowing. 
and I'm going to pull out um, three Hebrews today to start with, and we'll see where that brings us. So starting at the top, we have the letter Kaf. I love that. I'm going to probably zoom in a little bit to be better. In the center, we have the letter Tav, also very nice. And on the bottom, we have the letter Resh. Okay, let's zoom this in just a just a smidge. Okay. So starting at the very top, the way I read the the three Hebrew spread is that the top is our current situation. The center is maybe the challenges we're facing or the fears, and the bottom is the outcome given the current circumstances. So at the top we have the letter Kaf, and the letter Kaf is uh, the palm of a hand. It is said to be um, a hand, maybe the hand of the divine reaching out, or our own hand reaching out for uh, giving and receiving. It also can be seen as the sole of a foot. So anything that a hand or foot can do here, so it could be about sheltering someone or helping out, but it can also be about oppression. So there may be a feeling of oppression right now or a feeling of a need for give and take. The letter Kaf is the first letter of the word Koach, which means power. So when I look at this Hebrew, I'm thinking um, we're talking about a power struggle here or a power dynamic that we're trying to resolve. The kaf is the binary transformation of wealth and poverty. So that idea of giving and receiving is very strong here. And in terms of expertise, that may seem to be about we have knowledge to give, but we also have knowledge to receive, and we need to be open to both of those sides of it. Uh, it also is the first letter of the word keter, which is crown. And so sovereignty is important here. Um, the sovereignty, the, the power and the wealth that one receives from being a sovereign or maybe receives from the sovereignty of the divine itself. Uh, the keter, the crown, is what sits on top of the head. And so it's often said that kaf is something that covers the head, like uh, like the palm of a hand could cover the head, or a kippah, meaning the, the hat that one wears in deference to the divine in a place of worship is often seen as uh, being represented by the kaf here. So we have this thing that covers over, or the wings of the Shekhinah, uh, it covers over us as we are sheltered in the world with protection, like the algaes here. So it's about giving and receiving. It can be also about oppression. It can be about um, being pushed down by the palm of a hand or having a, a foot set upon our neck. So um, where does that land for you in terms of how you are um, seeing our situation here. We have protection, which I love. I love that we are being protected by the divine. I love that there's power here and that we have this expertise that we are considering. Are we the expert? Do we need an expert? Do we need to visit our inner expert right now in terms of what is coming up for us in the world? And so that's our current situation here. The challenge that we're facing right now comes to us in the form of the letter Tav. And Tav is the final letter of the Hebrew Aleph Bet. So it's about a completion. Something is coming to an end and maybe that's a concern or a fear here. That there's a challenge with bringing something to a close. Tav is seen as a stamp or a sign, a uh, signature or a seal on the Aleph Bet itself. As if the divine carved all the letters and then signed the name Tav at the end as a signature, as a completion, as that stamp or chop that one might put at the bottom of a piece of art. So we have this idea of completion. We have an idea of something coming to an end and the binary transformation of sovereignty and slavery. So we have the Keter up here with the crown and this binary of where do we land on the continuum between slavery, such as when we were in Mitzrayim before the Exodus, and sovereignty, where we come into the place of our own personal sovereignty at Sinai, where we receive the instructions of the divine and that um, contract, basically, that we're making with divinity to 
follow our instructions, uh, listen more carefully to the divine in terms of what we are supposed to do, listen to the expertise that's coming to us through Torah and through our own inner repository of Torah, as we understand it, Torah meaning learning and teaching. And those, those things are intricately involved with each other, learning and teaching. We learn from a teacher, but we teach what we learn. So there is this binary here. Where are we between sovereignty and slavery? Where are we on that continuum? It is the last letter, and as such, it speaks to finality and the finality of judgment that is sometimes perceived in this letter. It looks a little bit like a Dalit and a Nun, which spells Deen, and that means judgment. So there's this idea of death, endings, judgment, uh, some kind of final uh, stamp on a thing. Um, and, but also for me, it, it, it speaks to the past generations of of our ancestors that are stamped into us in that DNA, in that actual physical material that we are built up of, there is something that is coming to us down from the ancestors, from the expertise of the ancestors in our very coding, in our very bodies, and time to listen into that right now. But there's some concern, there's some fear around that. There's some fear about reaching out to the ancestors. Perhaps there's some fear about what is coming to an end, about the judgment that may be coming to us from this completion of whatever is coming to an end here. So that is our fear or our concern right now, the letter Toph. And as we move forward into the future, we're coming into the completion of this reading, which is the letter Resh. And Resh is said to be the first letter of the word Rosh, which means head, uh, which is generally speaking about a beginning, such as Rosh Hashanah or Rosh Chodesh, as we're coming into the new moon on, ding, on Saturday with the month of Sivan, Rosh Chodesh, our new moon. And so here we have it. As we come to this final letter, we have the beginning. So we've come to an end, and now we're coming back to a head, to a beginning of a new thing. And in this case, it's the new month of Sivan, the Rosh Chodesh. And that is the beginning. In the beginning, Bereshit is the first letter of the word of Torah, and Resh is right in that word. It is the binary transformation of seed and barrenness. So we're planting a seed, and that's the idea what we do at the new moon, is we plant seeds. We have ideas about what we would like to accomplish in the coming time, and we plant those seeds. We plant those ideas. We really consider and contemplate perhaps journaling or dreaming into what we would like to see flourish. But will it come to fruition? We do not know. So that's that thing we have to determine. Are we planting seeds that we like to see growing into our month coming up? And what are those seeds? And we can turn ourselves back to the power here, back to the koach we have, with that being sheltered, being protected by the divine, turning into our expertise, our, our ancestors, the expertise of Torah, maybe those around us that we trust, or our inner knowing of what is coming from the divine. And when we do that, we can overcome these fears of the finality and the judgment and turn back to the beginning, the beginning of the new month, the new moon coming in to celebrate what is coming, whatever it is, and know that it is good. And that's what I'm seeing as this reading here today. And as I said, I'm going to pull out one further card from, I'm going to go with the Rider Waite Tarot today, just to see what one further clarification we can get today. Which card is it that would like to tell us one further clarification about this reading? And that card is the world. Lovely. That's so beautiful. So the world card is the final card in the tarot and it speaks to completion. So it's like the Tav, a lot of times it's affiliated with the Tav in tarot. Um, you can see that we have the beautiful dancing um, wreathed, wreathed woman who is 
Um, she's got the batons. She's got the wands of power here. And the four uh, animals that were seen uh, by Ezekiel, uh, the, the bull, which is the Taurus, which we're just finishing, the eagle, the lion, and the human. And so this is the world. This is a beautiful, wonderful completion card. All is coming to fruition right now. And so I think this is just fa fantastic in terms of... Uh, I'm trying to find a, uh, something to lean this against so that it will, you can see it without the glare. Um, it's like this this fear that we've got about the ending is not, nothing we need to fear. We are protected by the divine. We have the expertise both within us and without us, and we are protected over by the hand of Shekhinah, who's represented here, sort of as this beautiful woman, and a new beginning is coming as we come to a completion here. So... Um, lovely reading for those of you who chose expertise today. I hope you have a beautiful uh, Sivan as it comes in. Chodesh Tov. And I will see you here in your next reading. Hello, card number two. You've chosen the card Integrity and the Nordic Rune of Ansus. Let's take a read of your card itself. It says, Integrity. Show consistency in your values and behaviors. A fall is inevitable sometimes. Land softly. Seek your own integration. Integrity. Hmm, love that. So integrity is your basic watchword here. And the Nordic rune that we've chosen is Ansu's. And Ansu's is, um, it is a letter of communication. It's about the voice and the mind. And it's frequently associated with the god, um, the big god, Odin in the Norse, uh, a chieftain, um, or someone who is, is related to it. But it's his voice, it's this, it's this speaking and the signals and inspiration, um, vision and self-knowledge that comes with knowing one's own inner divine. So that's beautiful to go with integrity here. So we have Ansu's and integrity. We'll pull out some Hebrews now and see what our reading is today. <laughs> We're going to pull out three Hebrews here. Um, and the way I read these is the top is what is our current situation? The center is what is our fear or challenge? And the bottom is the outcome given our current circumstances. Integrity. So at the top we have the letter bait. In the center we have the letter pay. Lovely. And at the bottom, we have the letter Zion. Okay. So at the top, we have the letter Beit. And Beit is the first letter of the of the Torah. And so as we're coming into the, the revelation at Sinai, that's really significant. But our current situation is the first letter of Torah, Bereshit, in the beginning. Beit is the second letter of the Aleph Bet, but it is the first letter of Torah. And it means in and with uh, it, it's a preposition um, that means so many things. I love that it means in and with and by and um, within. It's the letter that is said to be uh, the, a house, a home, like bait uh, is the name of a house, bait. And so it is about our house. It's about our home. It's about where, where do we dwell. It can be any kind of building. It can be a, a home or a place of work or a place of worship. Or for me, I think it speaks to even just the body itself, where we dwell, where is our, where does our soul dwell within? And that is what bait is about. And this is where we are now, finding our integrity right now in where we dwell. It is the first letter of Torah, as I mentioned, but it's also affiliated with or rules over the day of Shabbat. Shabbat being um, this month, the first day of the month as well. So we have Shabbat here, a time of rest, a time where we just dwell in our homes and and rest the best we can with uh, with the divine. We spend time 
focusing not on work, but on our inner connection with divinity. It rules over the planet Saturn in the sky, but it also is said to be a mouth. It rules over the mouth in the body. And I love that in so many ways, um, because here we are now coming into this place where the mouth of the divine is speaking the words of Torah to us so that we can find our place. And we have the communication rune here with the divine, uh, the Aleph, the, the Odin, uh, if you will, the big God, uh, speaking with mouth the word Brashit into existence. That's where we are right now. We're finding our integrity. We're finding our, about our values and our behaviors in terms of receiving Torah, which gives us instructions on how to live and seeking our own integration. The, the fall is inevitable. Sometimes land softly in this integrity card is speaking to the idea that even though we have, maybe now that we know what the rules ought to be, we're going to mess it up sometimes. But we can know that the divine is still here with us speaking uh, and giving us instructions consistently as we move through the world. And our center letter here, which is considered, I said, the space of a challenge or a fear is the letter pay and really interesting you'll I'll show you this you can see that the pay is what well, it is said to be the mouth of the divine so it is the mouth of the divine speaking a creation into existence and if you look carefully the bait can fit right inside uh, let me go this way it can fit right inside that pay so it's as if the mouth of the divine is speaking the bait into uh, creation right now so, Pei is about this mouth of God who is speaking uh, the world into existence. And it is the number 80 in Gematria. And 80 is this magical infinity number. And you can see that the Pei looks like a spiral. I love that because it's it seems to be speaking about infinite time and that it spirals in and it spirals out. It goes inside of us deep down into our very atomic self and then all the way out into the universe into these macrocosms that exist out there in the billions and billions and trillions of stars that exist so it's got this infinity number eight is a is an infinity loop as you know it looks like an infinity symbol on its side and 10 times eight is just this massive uh, manifestation of the infinite itself so this mouth that exists and speaks creation into existence is here and the fear or challenge that's coming with the pay is managing our integrity, being able to speak things clearly and uh, beautifully. Um, it is the binary transformation of grace and ugliness. So we need to remember that when we speak, we need to speak blessing and not curses. We need to speak beautiful words and not create as we speak something that is not gorgeous in the world. I have a very strong belief that what we say matters, that when we say something in the world, it can come into fruition. This is how we make stuff happen. We have been given this power by the divine to speak reality into existence. So when we speak, we need to be mindful of our words. We need to be mindful that we're saying things that matter and that are good, that we that we imagine what we would like to see in the world rather than cursing that which we do not want to see in the world. So this is a challenge. It's a really big challenge and we've got it here twice. We've got the, the Fehu, which, I mean, sorry, the Ansus, which is about communication uh, through divinity and the divine mouth itself right here. So just gorgeous. And we have to remember our integrity. We need to remember to to seek consistency in our values and behaviors, that we need to say what we want to say and mean what we say and say what we mean and not uh, think about what we don't want to see in the world because when we speak that out loud, that comes into being as well. So find the blessings and find, find the reality we would like to seek. Imagine the world we'd like to have in the, in, in the future or in the present and not curse the reality that we don't like right now. Those are all really, really essential values. And this, this idea of the infinite that is here with us at all times and 
existed before we arrived and will continue to exist long after we're gone. The infinite is here regardless. And I see the pay as corresponding to the Ansu's rune in terms of communication and breath and the divine. So the pay and the Ansu's, these, these two are the same. They're the same rune in my book. So this idea of communication, God and breath, all right here in the Ansu's and the pay. So I love this for this reading that we have the, the bait, which is the first letter of the Torah being spoken and then the mouth itself speaking it. But the challenge here is to remember that we have that power to create with speech as well and to create what we'd like to see and not to speak about what we don't want to see in the world. And that brings us to our final letter, which is the letter Zion. And that's interesting because, you know, Z Zion is the name of the letter, but Zion is sometimes known as the land of Israel. So uh, here we have Zion. It is the number seven. It's a completion. It is seven being the number of days of creation. So we have this completion number here. It is the seventh day of creation, which is Shabbat. And Beit rules over Shabbat. So we have Shabbat here twice as well. So we need to remember to rest. We remember to take the time to enjoy our Shabbat, to enjoy, particularly this month, the Rosh Chodesh, which is happening on Shabbat, the new moon that's coming in, and just really uh, dwell there. It is a sword or a scepter, and so it speaks to sovereignty. And I think of it as personal sovereignty. Uh, this this um, idea that we have power here, that we have uh, the power of the divine, but we also have our own personal sovereignty that we need to call in. And since it is the number seven, it speaks to the seven weeks of the Omer, which we are just entering. We are in the seventh week of the Omer. We're almost at 49 days, which happens next Thursday on the 25th of May. Um, and so so much happening here, this completion of the Omer, the completion of our travels, the arrival at Sinai, the um, idea of the Shabbat itself just coming to an end, uh, the week coming to an end, the Omer coming to the end, the travels coming to an end right now. And it, it corresponds to the constellation Gemini, which is the constellation that we are coming into with the month of Sivan. This is the letter that corresponds to the month of Sivan. So just gorgeous right now. This integrity, this speaking, uh, the mouth, the Shabbat, the mouth again, the Shabbat again, just these reflections of all these things coming in and the integrity that we have to find in ourselves as we come through into this power that is the month of Sivan, the revelation at Sinai, and the um, completion of the Omer, the seven weeks of the Omer. And this letter also corresponds to the Shekhinah, the word Shekhinah, which is the indwelling presence of the divine. When you add up all the numbers of those letters, brings us to seven, which is uh, the bride of Shabbat, the Shabbat bride. And it is said that the Torah itself is like a ketubah. It's like a marriage contract that's written between the divine and Israel. So we are that bride, and also the bride is Shekhinah, and we get to come in together and find our connection and our intimacy within Torah with the divine. And however that plays out for you, and you can imagine it in, in any number of ways, there's a very traditional way of idea, identifying it as male and female coming together, but if you do not identify as male or female, or, or both, that's fine, because we're all one here. We're all one in the divine, in the Shekhinah, in the infinite as we come together. So I'm just really excited about how this reading is playing out. And I am going to pull out one tarot card as well from the Rider Waite deck just to get if there's any further messages that we're supposed to receive from this reading. It seems very uh, lovely to me already, but let's see if there's anything else that we can get coming out of this deck. There it is, trying to slide it off the top. And we have the Seven of Wands. And you can see the Seven of Wands is this person who is defending their position up on the hill. They are needing to defend themselves. And I love that it's a seven because we have the seven here as well. And there is this idea of up on the hill. We're up on the mountain. And we've got the seven, the completion, 
and we are also defending our integrity. We are showing that we have integrity, that we are defending what is important to us, that we are speaking what is important to us and defending against it. We have a higher ground, so we have the ability to prevail. And if you notice on this card, um, this person is just like, they're even wearing two different shoes. They just don't care at all about uh, what anybody else thinks. They are really just defending what is important to them and uh, standing on the higher ground, holding that higher ground solidly with their completion and the number seven here. They're speaking what's true. And I'm gonna put this under here so that we can see it without the glare. So as we have come into this time of the beginning of Brayshit, uh, the word that is being spoken, the word of the divine, the mouth of the divine twice here. And we have this completion and the seven here, the day of Shabbat twice, the seven again here, the Shabbat bride, the Shekhinah adding, adding, adding up to the number seven we need to maintain our integrity and speak what is true and beautiful, defend what we need to defend, uh, know that we are d designed for rest. You know, we say that the divine rested on the seventh day. It's not because the divine needed rest, but because resting is a holy act. And we need to remember that when we find ourselves feeling like we need to rush and continue to work all the days. Uh, we need to take time to really just sit and listen to the voice of the divine and hear what we need to hear, seek our integration. And if we do fall, land softly, defend what is important. And as we come into Sivan, I think this is gorgeous with the month of Sivan in the letter Zion. Remember that you are uh, being spoken to by the divine all the time. And if you can listen, if you can take the time to rest and listen, you will hear and know what is valuable and important. And that's your message for today. I hope you found this wonderful, and I hope you have a beautiful, beautiful Shabbat. Really take the time to rest. I uh, hope you have a beautiful first day of Sivan, and find the revelation you need to find as we reach the Omer and Shavuot. And we will see you here next time. Chodesh Tov. Hello, card three. You've chosen the oracle card of Refine. Let's read it and see what it says. A tweak is needed. Don't start over just yet. Consider partnering with a gifted editor or mentor. A new level of mastery is calling to you. Refine. Hmm, okay, so if you have something project you've been working on, it's time to work with someone perhaps to refine that and get it up to snuff. And we have the letter Degas in the Nordic runes. And Degas is said to be the breaking of the day. It's this bright light shining over. It's like a breakthrough, the dawn coming uh, into, um, into our eyes so that we can see clearly that suddenly we have a breakthrough, aha moment. It is about awakening and awareness and prosperity but the power to change the self and to change one's own attitude about a thing. So some kind of breakthrough is coming in this time of refinement that you've got going on here. So let's start out by pulling out three Hebrews today, and then we'll see what else comes up. Um, let's see. I'm going to pull out three to start, and the way I do this is the one at the top is going to be our current situation. In the center, our challenges or fears, and at the bottom, our outcome. So at the top, oh, we have the Ein Sof. Beautiful. I love that. In the center, we have the letter Bait. And at the bottom, we have the letter Vav. Okay. 
So starting at the top, we have the insof, and the insof is the letter that is no letter. Um, there are 22 letters in the alphabet, and I include the blank as well, because there's this time, there's this space before the letters existed, the material onto which those letters were carved. And that is the primordial material, the void, the tohu vavohu, that um, which is mm, not not anything yet, and yet everything at the same time. So it's that place that is timeless, the primordial chaos that existed before anything else existed. It is the it is the stuff, the God stuff, from which we are all made. So that's the substrate of everything that exists, whether it be, you know, light or solid or fire or water, all of that is carved into something that is divinity in my book of things. So it's the infinite. It's the time before creation the, when there was only oneness. And that's where we are. We're coming into this time of Sivan, this month where the divine is up on the mountain and showing their power. And we have just this tiny glimpse of the infinite. We have this tiny glimpse. It's so easy to get, you know, bogged down into all the little tiny details. And uh, and what we need to do sometimes is just back out and see the big, big, big picture. Um, it, you know, as, as in terms of the refine goes, there's this idea that we have some little tiny nitpicky details that we need to deal with, but really maybe it's time to back out and see the whole picture. And same with the degas, we have this breaking of this illumination of everything, the everythingness of everything. It is this time before time, the eternal and the, the, the isness of the divine, that which is, was, and will be. And that we are part of that, that beingness. At Sinai, we have the ability to know that we were all there. There's this midrash that everyone who needed to hear Torah was there at the foot of the mountain when that came to us. So know that you were there and that you are there and that we're still there. There is no time outside of time. Time is a construct. So I love this, that we have that our place right now is the Ein Sof, that without end. No end is what Ein Sof means. And there's the bell that tells us truth. That is the truth. The divinity is here and that we are in it. We are of it. And that being said, we have the bait, which is our fear or concern in the situation. Bait is the letter that means house or home. Where do we dwell in the world? We dwell in this home. We dwell in this bait. And bait is one small part. It's the second letter of the, of the alphabet. And yet it's the first letter of Torah. And we are in this time of, of nothingness, of, of everythingness, having to carve one letter, and the first letter is bait. And that's hard. That's challenge. That's, that's maybe, again, a fear. How are we going to ruin the perfection of the everythingness by writing something on it? No, it creates a channel. It creates a channel through which that divinity can pour into everything. So that's our letter Beit. And Beit is the letter that rules over the day Shabbat in the week. Shabbat being the first day of the month of Sivan this month. So we have this time where we are uh, impelled to rest. We have to come to a place of rest. So that's a challenge. How do we come to a stop? How do we take time to really sit and rest in our homes in ourselves, in our world, in our bodies, find the place that we can rest right now. It's really a challenge. It is the letter that rules over the mouth in the body. Maybe we need to come to silence. Maybe it's time to stop talking a little bit and just really rest in the breakthrough, into, into the brightness, the light, the dawn, of the divine as it comes to us at Sinai. Mm. And so as we're in this time of rest, as we're in this time of trying to find out how to rest, 
where we're dwelling, we're finding our soul dwelling, our place in the world, seeing that first letter being carved into the void. That's a binary transformation in a bit of life and death. We're choosing life. We have to choose life every day. And sometimes we don't get to choose, but when we do, it's important to choose life. It's important to choose life. So the challenge here may be, how do we choose life? How do we rest? How do we allow that letter to be carved into the blankness that exists? And we need to find our home. And we need to take care of what comes out of our mouth and refine that which we need to refine. Find that new level of mastery that is calling to us. And when we do, we'll bring ourselves to the letter Vav. And Vav is the letter that means and. It's literally the word and in Hebrew. It's about connection. It is a peg or a hook that holds things together. It's that tiniest of little pieces of hardware that are so easy to lose that allows things to hang together. The veil around the Holy of Holies is held together with hooks like this. Sometimes they're made out of the most precious material because even though they are small, they are valuable. They are infinitely valuable. They are about connection. Vav is the number six in Gamatria. It's the sixth letter of the Aleph Bet. And so it's about the second to last day of creation. It's the last day things were created before the rest happened on Shabbat. It's the number six. So things are almost coming to an end here. We're very, very close to the end of the month. We're very, very close to the revelation at Sinai. We have this uniting and divi dividing that is happening here. It's, it's, uh, some say that it is like a person standing tall with their head slightly bent in humility. And it's also like a, a taproot reaching deep into the earth. The Vav also represents the Yesod. It represents the connection piece. Maybe it's like it's like a phallic symbol. It's like the it's like the 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 phallus of the divine, the Vav here, the Yesod, that that rooting piece. And so we are connecting. We're connecting to the earth and we're reaching up to divinity as well, reaching up above to the stars, reaching up to the heavens, reaching up to that breakthrough of the daylight, the dawn that is coming. It's connecting heaven and earth. And it's six, so it talks to about the six directions, the north, south, east, and west, as well as above and below. So all of the different directions that we might turn to for guidance like a crossroads, like an infinite crossroads that isn't just four directions, but actually six directions. It governs over time, changing the past to future. If you add a vav to certain verbs, it changes the past to the future and the future to past. So there's something about time here that is mutable. That idea that outside of time, there is no time, that everything is happening and we can see the wholeness of all things. It's the center of the divine name, the yud He vav He. So it's that connection piece between the seed of the Yud, the He of presence of the Hineni, the He of Hineni at the end, and the Vav connecting presence to presence. It is the month of Iyar, which is the month that we are in right now, coming to an end. So as we are moving forward from this place of inf the infinity and coming into a struggle between life and death about how do we rest and how do we train our mouth to refine just what needs to happen, we come into this place of near completion, this time of Friday, which is the day of pre preparing for Shabbat, preparing for that connecting piece, for preparing for the connection between heaven and earth, finding our place, the and that we need to, to embrace, to refine, to find a partner or an editor or a mentor that will bring us to a new level of mastery as we find that breakthrough that's coming for us. And I think this is a beautiful reading for this time of year, this, this time of the month where we're coming to the end of the month and starting into a new one with 
the revelation coming in just one week. So I'm going to pull out one more card. This is coming from the Rider Waite Tarot, just to see if we have any more messages or clarity that can illuminate us as we um, consider this reading about refining and breakthrough and about the infinite and about connection. Let's see what comes up. Oh, wow. Interesting. Okay, so we have the Seven of Wands, and I'm surprised because this is the same card that came out in the in the second reading. So Seven of Wands is really up today. Um, so it's about being uh, defending, defending what's important to us. You can see that this character is up on the high ground, receiving Torah perhaps, and they're defending with their wand that which is important to defend. They are refining their needs. They are seeing what needs to be changed and not tossing everything away because they're threatened. They are standing above and defending themselves against would-be attackers with, with this rod, with these wands. Um, and it is the seven, so it's a so this is six, and we've got seven, so it's completion. Something is coming to a completion, and we need to know that we have the power to defend against any attack that would be coming at us. And as you can see in this card, this person is wearing two different shoes. They've got a boot on one foot and a shoe on the other foot. Like they don't care. They don't. They don't even care what anybody thinks. They are just doing what they need to do to defend what is important to refine what they've already made that they are mastering what's going on. They've got this breakthrough and they are fighting for it. They are defending it to the end. And I think that's beautiful. I, I love this. So for those of you who chose the card Refine, I wish you a beautiful first day of Sivan. I hope that you find the rest that you need in Shabbat. And as you come in to this time of preparation for revelation, remember to defend what's important to you. Refine only what's needed and receive your breakthrough and your dawning of a new day. And we will see you here next time. Chodesh Tov.